what I want to do is first thank everybody for coming today. Um, I don't know if I'm going to follow Sanjay's theory of Navamsa exactly, but whatever I don't follow, he's going to follow. I'm just going to do a short introduction to the Navamsa, which most of you know already, but this is kind of for the tape and, and just so that people, because um, I know I have some beginners in here, so they may not have an easy understanding exactly of how to compute the Navamsa. So the Navamsa chart is, um, it comes from two words, so the Nava means nine and Amsa meaning division. So it's like many of the subcharts or Varga charts, you know, we take little subzodiacs and we kind of create different charts related to different areas of our lives. And as most of you know, they are used extensively. Um, in some parts of India, they're actually used more extensively than others. As I was telling Sanjay the other day, his use of divisional charts are much, much greater than anything I ever learned. I really never, never learned to use each chart to the extent that, that he does. And I think after today, um, you'll find a, a much greater understanding of Navamsa. When I learned Navamsa, it was mostly for marriage purposes, but also to get a better understanding of the birth chart. It's used for as an equivalent to what the ninth house in the Rasi represents because it has to do with the division of nine. So the ninth house in the Rasi, as you all know, is your dharma, it's your bhagya, it's your fortune, and it's all the good things that life is giving to you and all the good things that you are supposed to be doing in your life as well. So the Navamsa chart is going to give you a much greater and deeper understanding of everything, of your fortune, of your spiritual connection. The idea of it as a marriage chart is also, of course, from the idea of the fact that the marriage house, the seventh house, is 11th gains from the ninth. So through the marriage, uh, marriage is a reward. It's also through the marriage that you also find your, um, your fortune in life and hopefully a better understanding of what you have to go through and for some people it's not to have a marriage in life. So that's also computed from the um, Razi chart. Um, many people use the, the Navamsa as a reflection of the birth chart. Some people have said that it's the Navamsa that fructifies and gets fruitful later in life. That as you go on through life it's the Navamsa um, that takes over. There are actually many, many, many different different takes on the Navamsa, and you've heard, um, of course, from many different teachers, different different things like that. Some people say that as you get older, the Navamsa completely replaces the Rasi. I, I don't really think that's true, but Sanjay will talk more about that. But that's also what I've heard. I, I don't think anything replaces the Rasi. I think you always have to go back to the Rasi chart, but. It's, it's definitely true that the Navamsa will have a more, more meaningful place in your life as you get older because, of course, there's marriage and, of course, then you're able to fulfill your dharma better as you get older. So, okay, for those of you who um, really um, are a little bit not that easy to, to compute in terms of mathematics, there's just this very quick, quick reference chart that I typed up you know, which all of you know, but for some of you it's a little bit more difficult. Um, I just wanted to go through very, very quickly how they get the divisions that they do. The whole idea of nine is uh, derived for two reasons. In the first place, what you're going to do is you're going to take the zodiac 360 degrees, and when you divide that by nine, what you get is 40. So what you get here is the fact that every 40 degrees you're going through the zodiac. So that when you divide each sign, which is three and a third degrees, because what you're doing then is dividing 30 degrees of the sign by nine. So what you're getting is three and a third degrees. Um, as it's written on the piece of paper, it's just written like this. 3.2, 3.4. That's not a decimal, by the way. It just means 3 degrees 20 minutes, 3 degrees 40, 6 degrees 40 minutes. So when you see that handout, don't think it means 3 and a fifth. It means 3 and a third, 3 degrees 20 minutes, 6 degrees 40 minutes. So what you're getting here really is you, what you find out when you divide 9 into the 30 degree sign is that each Navamsa or each division 
is three and a third degrees. And then what you also find out when you divide the 360 by nine is the fact that it takes 40 degrees to go through each of the signs if you multiply it by three and a third. So if you look at the handout, of course, when you start with Aries, you get three, zero to three and a third degrees of Aries is an Aries Navamsa. Then when you get to uh, three and a third Aries to six and two thirds or six degrees, 40 minutes, you get the Taurus Navamsa and then so on. So what you're gonna get is um, 40 degrees further, which is where 10 degrees of Taurus starts, you start with a new zodiac. So it's kind of like little sub-zodiacs sub within the whole sphere of the zodiac, okay? So some of the ways that you can remember, uh, first of all, how they begin is that, number one, you can say that each cardinal sign begins with the first Navamsa being a cardinal sign. So Aries, the first three and the third degrees of Aries is Aries Navamsa, the first three and third degrees of Cancer is Cancer Navamsa, and so on with Libra and Capricorn. When you get to Taurus, if you look on that list, which is a fixed sign, the first Navamsa is the ninth sign from it. So when you get to Taurus, you see that Capricorn becomes the first Navamsa. Okay, when you have Leo, you see that Aries becomes the first Navamsa. Then when you have Scorpio, you see that Cancer becomes the first Navamsa. And when you have Aquarius, Libra becomes the first Navamsa. And then when you have the mutable signs, or some people know them dual signs, you have Gemini, and then Libra is fifth from it, and Virgo Capricorn is fifth from it, so that's where the first Navamsa starts. And then you have uh, Sagittarius with Aries, and then you have Pisces of Cancer. So those are some easy ways, you know, to remember uh, things. The other, um, the other easy way to remember it is that at zero, of course, zero degrees of every cardinal sign starts with a cardinal or movable Navamsa. And then you can also say that in the fixed signs, when you get to 10 degrees, you're starting from the beginning again. So in every fixed sign, like in Taurus, the 10 degrees to 13 and the third degrees is where Aries starts, okay? And then when you get to, to then 10 degrees of, um, when you get back down to, um, to the other 40 degrees, which is 20 degrees of Gemini, Aries starts again. So what you're getting really is the fact that you're going to start through the cardinal fixed and mutable signs, 0, 10, and 20, okay? So when you're um, looking at the Navamsa chart, the other thing that is important to know is that when you're dealing with the nakshatras, the padas are also going to correlate to the Navamsas. Okay, so that when you're having 27 nakshatras, we know that each nakshatra is divided into four padas. So you get the 27 nakshatras times four padas, and that, of course, equals 108, in the same way that the 12 signs of the zodiac times 9, which is the division of the Navamsa, equals 108. So we get 108 Navamsas within a whole zodiac, just like we get 108 padas within the whole zodiac. If you're looking, for instance, at what relates to your nakshatras, you can also see that very clearly. So when you take the first four Navamsas, for instance, of Aries, what you're getting are the first four padas of Ashwini. And they are going to, of course, then relate back to the elements, which is fire, earth, air, and water. And then when you get you know, to Barani, you get 13 degrees and a third of Aries, and you go down. So everything, every Navamsa is also related to a certain pada. Um, in the nakshatras. Okay, so that's another thing that's quite important when you're comparing the uh, Navamsas with the nakshatras. The other thing that is uh, very, very important is the fact that you have what's called Vargotama, and if you look at the handout, what's bolded there is the Vargotama degree of every, um, every sign. So that when you have, again, the cardinal signs, 
the section of the cardinal sign that's zero degrees to three and a third degrees, the first Navamsa of every cardinal or what we call movable sign is going to be its Vargotama position. When you get to the fixed signs, you're going to have 13 and a third to 16, 20 minutes, and that's going to be the same Vargotama. So Taurus will have the position, the Navamsa equal to Taurus at 13 degrees, 20 minutes to 16 degrees of 40 minutes. And then when you get to the mutable signs, it's going to be the very last Navamsa of that. So you get the 26 and 2 thirds until uh, 30 degrees of that sign. And that position is uh, something maybe Sanjay will explain as well. Um, Vargotama, you know, it's usually a position that some people feel is a position of strength. Some people feel it's the best, uh, the best position in terms of the Varga. So it's the best division of the Rossi chart. And so a lot of people make a mistake of thinking that if you have a Vargotama planet, that it eliminates everything else associated with the planet, and that's not completely true. It will give it a certain sense. Some people say, you know, and, and Sanja, you'll, you know, this is just my particular take. I mean, some people say that Vargotama is like an exalted planet. I don't see that at all. Um, Maybe it's more like it's Swakshetra than it's exaltation. It's a little bit comfortable in that sign. It gives it strength. But if the sign is difficult, if it's debilitated, if it's got a lot of difficulties, the Vargotama planet might actually accentuate those difficulties rather than eliminate them. Yeah, Pisti. Vargotama actually means the best part of the Varga. Uh, but this might not be the best for the planet. Right. Well, you want to explain that a little bit? I know I read your article and I saw you said that, but yeah. go, can you explain that? That might be a little confusing yeah. for some people. Utama means highest or best. Um, basically, it tries to bring out the significance of something which is high or elevated above. And Varga basically means from the division, answer the division. So Varga is the best division of that specific sign. So each sign has a Varga Utama and uh, that means a Vargotama position, a specific amount of degrees, a specific amount of that is within that sign. If the planet is placed in this, it's in the best part of this sign. Now, the question is whether this also is the best place for the planet itself. So that's how I understand it. I mean, some people feel that Vargotama by default is the best position. But if you have a debility of the planet in both Rasi and Amamsa, then <laughs> you may, might think twice about calling it the best position for that planet. Right, yeah. I've, al I've always disagreed with people. Who I mean, there are people who say it's like an exaltation, and I, I would never, I would, n I personally would never put that kind of, you know, greatness attached to it. Yeah, this is a case. This is a case of a person, uh, Shatya, this time I saw all the time. About nine. Yeah, yeah. You can see this, actually. You can see Jupiter out here in the fifth house. It's in Burgos, Yeah, Jupiter is in one degree. So if you see the Navamsha, it's actually in the same Navamsha, that's Vargotama. And you can see that this Jupiter is actually Vargotama in Cancer, right? And that's the fifth house. And uh, you can see, this is the person, as, as, and as soon as Jupiter started, this person, because of the Jupiter's effect, he actually went mad. He, he, he's a schizophrenic, chronic case. Schizophrenic. And it's a funny case, and there's no way that he can uh, can be cured. Madness. You can see that a Vargotama really doesn't give. Ronnie is right on that. So if somebody says that uh, this is like a planet in exaltation or something like that, I mean, I didn't accept it. Ronnie is right. Yeah. I think it's got its strength, but I wouldn't call it exalted. I mean, and I think you have to look at it more closely. That's the yeah. thing, that it doesn't take away any, you know, every, anything else that's yeah. attached to it by any means. Uh, see the place where the planet is placed in the Rashi chart, and then see the place where it is placed in the Ravamsha chart. So it's in the same house. So counted from its sign in the Rashi chart, it's in the first house. So Vargotama planet is one that has a direct impact on you, on your head. So now if that planet is bad, it can ruin your head. If something is stronger, that doesn't necessarily mean it's better because if it's difficult, then the strength of that planet is going to give you more difficulties. It's going to really make it stand out in the chart. So that's, that's some of the um, 
just going over some of the things in terms of that. Did you want Did you want to talk about the deities attached to the, um, or you wanted you wanted to do that? You want me to do that? <laughs> okay. In your handout, you also see now some people know the um, know the idea of the deva and uh, manusha and rakshasa as being as being categories of the navamsas. We do that a lot when we're categorizing the navamsas. And in fact, you can do that when you are also looking at the at the nakshatras and the table, I don't know if your table's in your other handout, but very quickly, what you get is that when you're starting, when you start with the deva, which is kind of divinity, which is divine, and then the manusha, which is kind of like a sort of more of a human human quality, and then the rakshasa, which is, well, quote, you know, in a cer- terms of more difficult or demonic is really the, not. I don't like that word, but that's sort of the definition that you get. When you're doing the, when you're starting with the cardinal or movable signs, the first navamsa is going to be ruled, um, is going to be a deva navamsa, and then the second navamsa is going to be the manusha, and then the rakshasa, and then it repeats itself. When you start with the fixed signs, it's going to start with the manusha, and then the rakshasa, and then the deva, and then when you get to the mutable signs, it starts with the rakshasa, and then the deva, then the manusha. So it's, it's going to have to do with the, um, the kind of, I guess, way you approach life and have to do with the particular deities that you're going to be um, confronted with when it comes to your Navamsa chart. The, the last thing, and, and Sanjay should go into this because if, if I go into these stories and the lessons learned, I'm definitely not going to do it justice. So that's why I said I'd rather just do the calculation. Now when you were talking about the 64th Navamsa point, were you looking at the Bhava chart for that, or you were just looking at the regular Rasi point? So it's not the regular Lagna, it's the, the Bhava Lagna from that, or what? Actually, the same thing. What, okay. what, what we use in the 15 degrees plus and minus. So the 8th house would be exactly the 4th Navamsa actually. Mm-hmm. Otherwise there's no way that you get it, if you use any other system of Bhava. It doesn't really work out. The cusp from the eighth house is not going to be the sixty-fourth. But you do that from the cusp of the lagna, not the cusp of the fifteen degrees. Yeah, of the lagna. Right. If you take a bhava to be fifteen degrees plus fifteen minus, the cusp of the lagna, and then the cusp of the eighth house would be exactly uh, the sixty-fourth Navamsha. Right, but what I'm saying is that if you do, you don't have to do the fifteen degrees. No, it's the regular lagna point. Yes. Yeah. Okay, because that's what I was confused. Yeah, and we've, we've talked about that in, point, in, in class, the 22nd Drekana point and also the 64th Navamsha point from the moon. And what Sanji was talking about is that the 64th Navamsha point from the Lagna itself um, is one of those uh, very, very, very difficult points and the lord of that point. So that's the Kara Navamsha. So if you take an ascendant, for instance, and then move it 64 Navamshas, which is going to be the 8th house cusp, of the uh, of the chart, or let's say 150 degrees, uh, 102. I mean, 210 degrees, 210 degrees away from the lagna. What you then look at is the lord of the navamsha of that point. And of course, a shortcut is just to look at the navamsha chart and look at the lord of the fourth house in the navamsha chart. Just like the lord of the fourth house from the moon in the navamsha chart is going to be equivalent to the 64th Navamsha point from the moon in the Rasi chart. And that also becomes a difficult point for health in the chart. And what you were saying was that if the Navamsha of, uh, Lord of the Moon's Navamsha is well placed in the Navamsha chart, it can bring, it can help that point out. In the Rashi chart. In the Rashi chart. Okay. Okay. These yeah, things you're going to have to yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So anyway. But I think those are really the key the key things in terms of divisions and, and, and I think the important thing also is the when you see the correlation between the nakshatra divisions and the um, navamsha divisions then you, you see that the zodiac is kind of this incredibly symmetrical 
um, symmetrical thing. And that's why I think the Navamsha chart is so much higher, is so much more um, important, not really more important on one level, but so important for your dharma and for your path as compared to the other Navamsha charts, be, uh, as the other Varga charts, sorry, because of that division and how it works out with the 108 degrees throughout the nakshatra. So everything correlates and always comes back to that division of nine. Um, so I think that's why you get such a wonderful thing. Okay, so now I'm going to let you hear Sanjay. Thanks, Ronnie. The weather has been uh, pretty cool, and you've all uh, seen the introduction of Navamsha, and you can see that uh, there's more to Navamsha than what normally catches the eyes. And uh, I use Navamsha very, very extensively, and uh, there are so many things that I see from the Navamsha. So I'll share some of the techniques with you. And uh, like Ronnie said, that the Navamsha is 3 degrees 20 minutes. Why is this 3 degrees 20 minutes so important? I mean, why not 3 degrees? Why not 4 degrees? Anybody? Uh, because you divide the 39 is, you get it 320. But why do we divide by 9? Why do I take that number 9 divided by 9 and say this is so important? Why? 9,000 so important and the house of fortune and harmony. What about 10,000? 10,000. 10, well, it's not fortune though, it's not luck, it's not a good karma house. Well, it is the house of karma. It's the house of karma, but not good karma, not a people. <laughs> <laughs> Tenth is the house of Raj Yoga. It's the house of Raj Yoga, everybody wants tenth house. Money, everybody wants, everybody wants success, everybody wants... There's a tenth house, there's a Raj Yoga, why not, why not ten? I mean, why not fifth house? Fifth house is so important. It is more crucial than the ninth, from that point of view. Ninth is <laughs> the four openings. It's previous life. The Bhagya is coming from previous lives. Right, right. So that's the take on it. So there are two things that we are talking about. One dharma and we are talking about? Bhagya. So basically it's the dharma which is very important, right? And who's the karaka for the dharma? Sun, right? Now when we take a sign of 30 degrees, who who are the signs? Who is the overlord of the signs? The sun. The sun is the overlord of all the signs, right? And he is the significator of the first house and the ninth house. Is he a significator of any other house? Okay. Tenth house to some extent, yeah, okay. But main house is the first house and the ninth house. So if we take 30 degrees and we divide this by 9, we are getting 3 degrees 20 minutes, right? This is, this is sun. Is sun alone going to give me all my fortune? Is the moon not going to have any say on that? Moon has much more say, you will all agree on that. At least we astrologers, Jyotishis will agree on that. Now the moon is a lot of what? He is a lot of the nakshatras, right? So we take a nakshatra of 13 degrees. What's the span of a nakshatra? 13 degrees, 20 minutes. And we divide it. Moon is karaka for which house? Fourth house. So I divide it by the fourth house for which it is a karaka. I get 3 degrees, 20 minutes. This is why this 3 degrees 20 minutes is so important because it takes that span of which it is the Lord and divides it by the number for which it is the Karaka. I am taking the Nakshatra and dividing it by 4. I am taking the Rashi and dividing it by 9. And I am getting a common denominator over here that is 3 degrees 20 minutes. And this is what I can call over here as a Nava Amsha means one ninth division or a nakshatra that is star pada which is one and the same that is why this is so important okay so now we know why this is important so let's see what exactly I can get to know of it that means from this navamsha I can get to know how much of good fortune the sun has got in store for me how much of dharma and how much of it I am going to enjoy in this life, my bhagya. What is the share? Let's say somebody's father has hundred million dollars and they are three brothers. So they have to share it, right? But normally it doesn't happen that they all get equal shares. How much of it is this person going to get? This is what the father has, but how much of it is coming to him? This is bhagya. Bhagya is portion. So we are going to study Navamsha from various perspectives. And one of this, and the most important thing is, we are going to determine what impact it is going to have on my fortune. That which is already destined to happen. 
Bhagya means that which is already destined to happen. Now, Rani was just talking about this uh, nakshatra deities, I mean the Navamsha deities. I'll touch on them. Actually, it's an attitude. The deities are not like, it's not gods. It's you. You are God. In a sense, you are God because you are, you are, you are a human being. So you are God in a sense. In fact, everything in this world is God. That's the way of looking at the world. And uh, the Navamsha is divided into three types of deities, which are Deva, Manushya and Rakshasa. Does anybody know the story of uh, Dhatatreya? You are aware of the story of Dhatatreya, all of you? Okay. They say God created three types of beings called the Devas, the Manushya and the Rakshasa. Who are the Devas? But God created them. So how, 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 how can they be the gods? So the translation is wrong. Deva is derived from the word Diva. Diva means light. When God created Deva, Manushya and Rakshasa, it cannot be Deva cannot be God. The translation is wrong. Deva is divided pardon? Yeah, like angelic. Anything with light, anything to do with light. And light means what? Having knowledge of. Not just physical light, having knowledge of. So Deva means that which gives enlightenment or knowledge. The pursuit is for knowledge or light. Manushya Manushya are, we say Manushya is the human, that which is very human and which is natural. When uh, one of the American presidents had an affair and it became such a big controversy, everybody said later on, oh, that's human. So what was human about it? The desire. The desire is human. And the desire, the ultimate desire is what? Greed. Right? So, so Manushya is material needs. And then the third type we have, Rakshasa. Rakshasa means envying the other. Somebody has something which you don't have. So you are spending all your time trying to get that. Oh, he's, uh, he's, uh, someone has a Mercedes, I have a smaller car. So I want a bigger car. That's Rakshasa. That's the Rakshasa type. One way to know how your mind works is to see in which of these divisions your Lagna Lord is placed. Because Lagna Lord is you. You check up which of these are you. And from there you can find out what is the primary motivation. Simo, you go on. No, I, I, I can't even get so well looking for the point the in, in Rashi or only Navamsha chart? No, no. In the Rashi chart or in the Navamsha chart, these divisions are there. In the Rashi chart, this division is already there. So you take your Rashi Lagna Lord. Lagna Lord of the Rashi chart is you. You are the Lagna Lord in your Rashi chart. You are the Lagna Lord in every divisional chart. Keep that in mind. The Lagna Lord in every division, whether it be Rashi or any other division, is you. So we take the Rashi chart, let's say my Lagna Lord. My Lagna Lord is in Pisces, in this division, is Deva. So what is it that I am after? All the time. Knowledge. I seek light. I am prepared to sacrifice everything for that. Okay, now. Similarly, you will find different planets in your chart in different divisions. Those planets which are in the same thing as your Lagna Lord will support your Lagna Lord in one direction. Those that are not will take you in some other direction. It is possible that when a Dasha changes, everything can change simply because the Lagna Lord was in a different direction. You could become more material. You could become more power. What do the Rakshasas want? Power. They want to dominate. The politicians. 
Am I being understood over here? No, but is it the same logic of the law from Rossi to all the divisions, or are you saying you take each divisional chart and look at the logic of the law in there? Is you. In that division is you. For that division matters. Okay. Here, in the Rashi chart, these devatas are related to the Rashi being divided into so many. Okay? So this is one of the uses of the devas. And the mantra for this that was taught by Brahma was Da. Da is Dhatatreya. Da for Dhatatreya, the knowledge. I mean, you can read more, uh, read up more on this, on Dhatatreya, and perhaps you will understand what all this is about. Okay, we'll go into the use of Navamshas. Let's go down further. The first and most important thing to see in any horoscope is the ninth lord. Check up where the ninth lord is placed. Yeah, in the Navamsha. Go back to Aurobindo's chart. Okay, let's just open uh, Aurobindo's chart if you want. In Jatak Parijata, Vaidyanath Rikshita specifically mentions that check up the Navamsha occupied by the ninth lord. Examine the ninth lord of your Rashi chart very carefully. The ninth lord is going to tell you what kind of bhagya or fortune you are going to have. This is the case of Sri Aurobindo in which you can see that the ninth lord is Jupiter and the Lagna lord is moon, right? Now you can see that the moon and the ninth lord Jupiter are both in Deva Navamsha. So what is it that this man is after? Light, Light knowledge. I mean, he spent his whole life just trying to understand the Vedas. His exposition of the Rig Veda has been one of the highest. In this manner, you can also see how the person is going to pursue his dharma. What is his dharma? Is he after power? Is he after money and material gains? Or is he after knowledge? Find out what is your dharma and do what your dharma is. It's as simple as that. If you are destined to be a politician, then be a politician. Why are you trying to become a saint? <laughs> right. And uh, if, if you don't have confluence between the Lagna Lord and the Nine Lord, let's say that the Nine Lord is Lai and the, the, the Lagna Lord in your Rashi chart when you divide is uh, Raksha. Very nice question. Very nice question. What happens when there is a mismatch between the two? If the Lagna Lord, let us say, is in Deva and let us say the Ninth Lord is in Rakshasa. Well, the Ninth Lord dominates. That is your fortune. You don't like to do politics, but politics is going to give you luck. This is what happens in many charts. Very often you don't like to do things, but you end up doing it. That's because that's your luck. It's not that people like to do certain things at all times. That is Bhagya. That is what Bhagya is all about. Good point. Okay. Uh, similarly, check up the ninth lord in the Navamsha to see how strong it is, how well placed it is. If the ninth lord is strong in exaltation, if the ninth lord is in a good Rashi, in a beneficial Rashi, then you can know that there is good fortune in the chart. If the ninth lord is weak in debility or things like that, it's bad luck. A lot of bad luck in the chart. So the ninth lord of the Rashi chart should be well placed in the Navamsha. That is very important. Your example though, if you used your ascendant, which is Pisces, and you said that. Yeah, lot of the sentence. Yeah. Okay, just open up my chart. Let's, let's take up the case. Wait a minute. Yeah, I understand, but he looked at where his Pisces lot was and said that's for Jupiter. Yeah. You didn't say your lot, but you say Jupiter. P.M. right here? Yeah, Sanjay. Uh, can we see the... You can see here, the Lagna is Pisces. <coughs> the Lagna lot is Jupiter. Okay? The ninth house is Scorpio. It has two lords. One is Ketu and one is Mars. Now, check up the Navamsha. Now you can see that the Lagna Lord is placed in Aquarius. Can we see the Devas, Amsha rulers? Now you can see Jupiter is in Deva. Jupiter is also the Lagna Lord. Is there. Right. Now what happens to the ninth Lord? Can we see Ketu? Ketu is in Deva. What about Mars? Mars is in Deva. So, so that's what he is after. That's what I am after. But what happens if I am running, say, let us say a Dasha like Saturn Dasha. So a 19 year phase of Saturn Dasha would be very bad for me. 
I am interested in this direction, but I am forced to go in this direction. So naturally it will be torture for me. Right? This way we can clearly see that here is a person who wants to go in a certain direction, but goes in a, another direction. What about Mercury Dasha? That's also Rakshasa. Rakshasa means power, position, domination. So when will the real directions come? In Ketu Dasha. Right? Uh, I see the Jupiter being in the fourth house in Navamsha. Yeah. It says uh, Jupiter may aid during the southern time. Hmm. Don't look at that division. That's different. Okay. This 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 Jupiter is in the eighth Navamsha. Eight Navamsha. Jupiter is in twenty-six degrees seven minutes. That is the 8th division of the sign, of the sign Pisces. It's clear? Okay, very clear? It works? Yeah, it works. It works nicely. Okay, now... Yeah, completely, completely. If there is a change in Dashas and you find a change in the Devatas, definitely there will be a change. The person is going to change. So let's say you, you have your... Everything is a deva, and you're stuck in the rakshasa kadasha. So, do you just keep pursuing the light, but you're tortured as you do? You will. You will. <laughs> Look at. <laughs> nice question. No, she's got a very good point. <laughs> Look at it. See, see. Not only we have to see what is then the fortune of the person the fortune if if at least one of the lords either the lagnal lord or the ninth lord either of these is in one of the dasha matching one of the dasha let's say ketu was in rakshasa and then saturn dasha and mercury dasha i wouldn't have liked to do so many things but i would have still done well to the world it would seem that oh i'm very lucky i'm pursuing power i have won elections and things like that see it's not in my fortune also my bhagya is not for that. Neither Ketu nor Mars who rule my bhagya are going to allow me to join politics or, or seek power or position. They will compel me to move in this direction of Deva. So the Lagna Lord and Ninth Lord will indicate in which direction you are going to go. And what happens when you are running a Dasha which is neither in this direction nor in that direction? So naturally it's just a waste of time. I mean you will be pursuing things but these things will be low-key. I will still pursue the line of the Devas. But that will not prosper as much as it should. So the same would happen if it was reversed. Yes, it would happen in the reverse. It would be a politician who would probably start thinking, you know, when a good dasha for Deva dasha were to come, you find politicians uh, starting to read good books and they uh, visit... Uh, uh, say, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I hope I have made my point. Right? Okay, let's uh, go to the next point about. Okay, now in this manner we have some more cases over there which you can study later at home. Now we just go down. They can study four, five cases, six cases are there. We can just study that later. I just want to go to the basic points. Yeah. That is primarily with Mahadasha. Yeah. Not with Anthardasha. Yeah, yeah, Mahadasha is basically. Mahadasha. Mainly Mahadasha. Because we are talking of the first and ninth houses. The sun. I hope you are aware of this rule. The Mahadasha is like the sun. The Antardasha is like the moon. And the Pratyantardasha is like Lagna. These are simple things which you can uh, study it easily. Which I think Ronnie also talked about. She talked about it. Let's go to the dignity straight away. Have you heard of a yoga called the Nietzsche Bhanga Raja Yoga? Right. When does the Nietzsche Bhanga Raja Yoga occur? One, yeah, four, five. four, five options. What about the Navamsha option? Navamsha is the planet, if it is debilitated in the Rashi, should be exalted in the Navamsha. Right? Okay. What exactly is happening when a planet is debilitated in the Rashi chart but exalted in the Navamsha? What is exactly going to happen? 
get uh, uplift the planet, I mean the, the meaning of the planet. Yeah, so whoever or whatever is represented by that planet is going to get a big lift. That is important. It is not you, it need not be you. That is something very important to bear in mind. Simply because there is a planet which has got Nietzsche Bhanga Raj Yoga doesn't mean you are going to become the President of the United States. Be sure of it, it is not going to happen. Right? It is it, it, the planet that, I mean, the house that the planet rule in the Rashi, right. it will... It will uplift. uplift. That's right. That's very right. When a planet has Nietzsche Bhanga Raj Yoga, that means a planet which is debilitated in the Rashi chart is exalted in the Navamsha chart. And it is the exaltation of the Navamsha chart that is giving it power, position and authority. Exalted in a high position. Okay? That is the fortune. The Navamsha chart has everything to do with your fortune, the Bhagya. So even if it is debilitated in the Rashi chart, that means it has no resources, but it has a lot of luck. Debilitated in the Rashi chart means there are no resources available. Exalted in the Navamsha means a lot of luck. So when a planet is debilitated in the Rashi chart and exalted in the Navamsha, it gets Nietzsche, Bhanga, Raja Yoga. The debility is cancelled because of good luck. Similarly, if a planet is exalted in the Rashi chart, it has a lot of resources. Debilitated in the Navamsha, no luck, bad luck. So the person passes through a terrible phase where having everything, he loses everything. Especially if you're in the dasha running of that planet. Yes, and the dasha has to work beautifully. Yeah, the <laughs> dasha ta has to run. It is a, the timing has to be with the dasha. That is true. Especially if it is answer dasha, it is surely going to happen. What is the planet in the Vamsa is in a nautical house or in a combustion? Combustion cannot occur in the Navamsha. Combustion, combustion cannot occur in the Navamsha. Combustion has to do with the degrees. But let's say a planet is in a bad house. That means the luck is still not good. Let's say Jupiter was in um, signs of Mercury in the Navamsha. It's not good. If Jupiter was in Sagittarius, a lot of luck. So the most important thing to see in any chart is the Lord of Lagna. People who have the Lord of Lagna very well placed in the Navamsha, like in own sign or in exaltation, are people who are going to go places. Go places. They'll do well. Can we have your chart? Okay. Just the Rashi chart. Yeah. You can see the Lord of Lagna is Venus. Okay. And this Venus has an exchange with uh, Ketu. Right? Mm -hmm. Now let's see the Navamsha position of. Venus. Venus isn't Libra. Own sign. Own sign and ex extremely well placed over there. So roughly around the natural age of Venus. Which is your natural age of Venus? 26? 26. 26 years? 25, 26? Mm -hmm. This person is going to have a, a totally new upliftment in his life. A new break. The life will change completely. What age did you come to the US? 26, right? That's right. What is it to get married? Uh, 28. March 7th floor. Okay. <laughs> That's a good point. I was thinking of that. I was thinking of that. Okay. Can we see some more charts sir, with a strong Namamsha? Okay. Let's see yours. Okay. Lagna Lord is Mars. Okay. Lagna Lord is Mars. In the Rashi chart. It's an exaltation. Look at the degrees very carefully, of course, you can see it later. See the Navamsha? It's Vargotama and in exaltation. Yeah. So don't you think it's a very good placement of Mars? Yeah, yeah we can make, we all can make that out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, <I> <laughs> <laughs> is the Lord in the Is the Lord in the If it is debilitated, it's bad in the Navamsha. If it is Vargotama, there's no way you can change it. Vargottama means that which is decided. It's on your head. I'll, I'll just explain about that Vargottama position once again to you. And how to go about doing Nietzsche Bhanga if it is there in the Rashi chart. I'll come to that part. Okay? Now this Mars, so 28 years, would be a very important changing phase in your life. 
turning point. Joint SGST. Uh, joint SGST in 28? Yeah. Okay. Mars is with Rahu. Okay, we'll come to that part later. Uh, but you, but you don't go to the dispositor of the planet that is hot there? We'll go into that. We'll go into that part. No, we use that. I'm just fo I'm just no, focusing on the one. There is an exchange between the two, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Parivartana yogas and all those yeah, yogas yeah, yeah, are there. Yeah, yeah. We'll go into that. But right now I'm just focusing on one aspect, the Namamsha. Okay. I just want to show how the Namamsha is going to work. Yeah. There's a lot involved in that. Just this Navamsha, the Vargotama position of this Mars will indicate an important change for him in that year. Okay. Now, uh, yeah. See, Nichabanga or Rajabanga, those affect only the areas indicated by the planet or the house plotted by it, not the entire... I'll, I'm just coming to that part. Okay. Now, how is this Nichabhanga or a Rajabhanga going to affect you? This is very important to know. If there is in any chart a planet which is in debilitated Navamsha or in exalted Navamsha, we need to know how this is going to affect me. Is it going to be good for me? Is it going to be bad for me? Is it going to give Raj Yoga? Right? Now, let's, uh, do we have the chart of Navin Patnaik? Just see it's in fame. Now, look at this Rashi chart. And my question is, how will Mercury Dasha be? This person was a cabinet minister in India, charge of steel and mines. His Mercury Dasha was about to begin. I had predicted he will be a cabinet minister, so he became. So naturally he would like to know, my Dasha is Cheney. Everybody says I am going to have a bad time, so please tell me what is going to happen. I told him, well you will become the chief minister. Now if that is having a bad time, that is having a bad time. That I don't know. Now tell me, can you see the Navamsha of Mercury? Mercury is in debilitated Navamsha. The planet is clearly indicating Raja Bhanga Nietzsche Yoga. All astrologers who saw this chart said that this person is going to lose power, he will be out of politics. I said he is going to be chief minister with the thumping majority. How did I say that? So Mercury Dasha sees straight away, Mercury is Rakshas at power position. His power is just going to go. I mean, stronger, stronger, stronger. Every day he has just become stronger and stronger. That is one. Go on further. Right. What matters in this material world is the Arudha Lagna. And that, and Arudha Lagna, A-L. Arudha Lagna. Count from the Lagna to the Lagna Lord. And count as many signs from it. So count from here to the moon, 12. And count as many signs from it, you get 12 over here, right? So this is the most important sign. Treat this as the lagna for all material things in this world. Your status, your position, your power, what you are going to be, from where, from where you are, what you will be recognized by. People don't know this about you. This is truth, but this is hidden. Only you know this about you. What people get to see is this. The air, the Arudha lagna. It is the image that you have, right? Now, from this, where is Mercury placed? It's in the sixth house, house of enemy. A benefic planet placed in the house of enemy is going to support the enemy. Am I not right on that? That means the enemy is going to have an excellent reputation. So whatever Mercury is indicating, will be indicating specifically for the enemy. And if this Mercury is in a debilitated Navamsha, it indicates that his enemies will be totally defeated. Totally defeated. defeated. And that's precisely what happened. So Mercury Dasha, Mercury Antar Dasha, he became a chief minister. I mean, it's like a governor of a state. Does anybody have a debilitated planet in the Navamsha? Okay, let's see Barry's chart. And then this chart. Okay. In this Rashi, uh, can we see the chakras straight away so that we can have the Rashis and the Navamshas together? Can you choose the Navamsha or something? Yep. So these are the Navamshas and uh, these are the Rashi charts. Is there any planet debilitated in the Navamsha? Yes. We have Jupiter debilitated. Don't we have Jupiter debilitated? Jupiter, right. 
Now, now, is this debility of Jupiter good or bad for him? It has to be bad. Who said that? See, see the AL. See this point. Now, from here, where is Jupiter? This is the twelfth house of secret enemies, right? So, what happens if such a Jupiter is placed in debility? Will it not destroy his enemies, secret enemies? He will have enemies, otherwise why would Jupiter go about destroying them? He will have problems, so Jupiter will indicate a period where these he will separate from these people and start off on his own. His secret enemies, he will leave. What's a secret enemy who gets exposed? Right. If you never get to know, then he always remains a secret. So what will Jupiter do? He will expose them and there could be a difference. Shall we see the dashas and see when this... Now see Jupiter and Rahu together over there, right? Mm, let's say, let's, let's go back to Mercury Dasha. See Mercury Rahu. Do you think this would have been a good phase? Yes. It would have been a very good phase according to you. Why? Rahu. No, this is really working. You, 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 people must know how to work on a chart. Because Rahu and Jupiter, Jupiter is exalted and Rahu is Jupiter is exalted in the Rashi chart and conjoined Rahu. Now, can we see the Navamsha? Jupiter is debilitated and is still with Rahu. Keep that in mind. Okay? Now, can you tell me how this Mercury Dasha, Rahu Antar Dasha would have been? How would this period be? This Rahu Antar Dasha? I think it will be bad. It will be good. It will be good. <laughs> Go on, go on, give me your reasoning. We are just talking about the debility of Jupiter. Okay, forget Rahu. How will Jupiter be? Jupiter will be good for him. Jupiter will be good for him. Okay, what will he do in Jupiter? Could make spiritual. Could make There, the, like you said, he would, have, uh, he would have identified the secret enemies and have parted them or at least they would have been in a beneficial manner or ended in a beneficial manner. Yep, and then he would go and start something new? Yes. Right. Right, yeah. Pardon? His law firms will be destroyed. Mm, yeah. And then he starts off anew. So whenever Jupiter comes, he's starting off new. Yes. Right? Because of the fifth house? Because it owns which houses? Can we go back to the Rashi chat and see which houses it owns? Two and five. Yep. <laughs> Two and five. So what's exactly going to happen regarding these houses? Money? Fifth house is the lord of Hora Lagna. Hora Lagna has to do with wealth. Right? So there could be problems because over there, Jupiter Rahu over there, Rahu in the ninth is bad. It's bad luck, Rahu in the ninth. So Rahu in the ninth will not give bad luck. What do you think? It will give good luck. Ninth is the house of luck. Rahu is in the ninth house. Bad luck. Straight away. It's as simple as that. Due to conjunction, should be giving the results of Jupiter with exalted? Right. So what's going to happen over there? The bad luck will come because the secret enemies will get exposed and they will come out in front. People who would have been secret till then will come out in front. And who are these Jupiter Rao? Can we see the detail? Will they be in his professional life? Do you find Jupiter Rahu again over here? Yes, What are the lords of? The seventh lord is what? Is partners. Partners in business. Is it not clear? Yes. So some of his partners in business were his secret enemies and they, because of greed, again Rahu, greed, they could come out in front as inimical. That's how you study the chart. It's so scientific. It's very scientific and very rational. Barry, could you share with us what? A few words on this? Thus Mercury, Dasha, uh, Rahu and Jupiter. I know, I know. what's the year? 82, 82. And 82, 84. Yeah, I have a lot of watches. Okay. Right? Hmm? Yeah, I guess what? 1980. Secret enemies? Getting exposed? Did you have trouble with business partners? Around 84, 83, 84. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
more taboo and you think it this is this is no but you will come out successful see it is are you going to wait for them to keep killing you or will you will they get exposed so what happened in jupiter jupiter they get exposed and you say goodbye and you come out and start a new life but why all this in mercury then yeah dasha has to do with the sun i am just talking about the results of an antar dasha this is the bhaga the total bounty whether there will be bounty or not that you decide from the dasha whether there will be business whether there will be money of which what you will share is from the antar dasha how much of it you are going to get and what you are going to get is from the antar dasha yeah will this happen for him in every rahu and jupiter antar dasha yes let's try the next one how about 1990 to 91 and 91 to 92 did you start a new business round about that time very that's when i made the most money you made a lot of money during this time did you start a new business or something or expand into a new thing happened with project and it was money yeah jupiter or no rahu's from 1992 to 91 july jupiter is 91 to 92 Was in uh, January of 1991. So it was in Rahul. Rahul, yeah. yeah. This is being successful. I mean, beneficial. Both will be beneficial for him ultimately. Even the divorce may be beneficial for him. Don't assume that it will not be beneficial. But the torment and the torture to the mind. That's okay. A relationship is breaking, but it may be good for him. <laughs> ultimately, something will be good or bad is decided upon the placement of the planets from the Arudha Lagna. Is it not? it may not be see the rashi chart and decide whether it was good or bad for him okay. see the arudha lagna see the upapada with saturn in it is it good to continue with the saturn mm -hmm. you can see that second house from this has this rahu and jupiter so definitely this marriage will break and jupiter in debilitating rahu in the, that is why so it will break during that time from the upapada we get to know about the marriages second house from the upapada is having guru chandala And this planet is placed in debility. It will break during that time. But the point is, those answers that have come in every day. Why only did that break in Mercury that time? Because then you have to see the relationship between yeah. the that time and after that time. We will go into the Navamsha chart in more detail when we talk of marriages. Okay. okay. And then we will decide why a marriage breaks and why it happens in a particular Navamsha. So we'll we'll go to each marriage. Yeah. Eighty and eighty-two. I had uh, very extraordinary spiritual experience. Eighty one and eighty two. No, between eighty and eighty one and eighty two. Rahu is twelve from Arudha Lagna. Are there? Are you are you aware of the dictum? If Rahu is placed in the seventh or twelfth from the Arudha Lagna, a person will become very spiritual. In the seventh house or the twelfth house from Arudha Lagna. This Arudha Lagna is very important. Please study this very carefully. Don't ignore this. This is what will manifest. If Rahu is in the seventh or twelfth house from Arudha Lagna, the person will become very, very spiritual. Ketu in the first house gives a lot of spirituality from Arudha Lagna again. Ketu is a spiritual being. In sixth house, on the parallel to the Rahu, if it's in the seventh house, it's Ketu. Yeah, in trines, one five nine from Arudha Lagna is very good. It's very good for spirituality. Uh, that, huh. uh, I mean, back in that, you say in the Jupiter, he made very good money in the astrology. Yeah, that is good. It's uh, it's fifth from the from the Arudha Lagna. It doesn't count that. So Arudha Lagna is here. No, no, Arudha. No, no, no. For the Arudha Lagna, the Jupiter is in the fifth from the Arudha Lagna. No, no, I don't. No. I don't see like that. Okay. I don't see it like that. It is the Lord of Hora Lagna. Okay. Means a lot of a lot of money matters will come into focus whenever Jupiter comes. Okay. Whether he will get the money or somebody else will get the money. See, Hora Lagna means money. So during Jupiter's periods, a lot of money will come into focus. Whether he will be able to get it or not, because Jupiter in the twelfth is in debilitated in Navamsha, he will get the money. Somebody else may try to get it. But he will get it. Why? Because Jupiter is debilitated. It's debilitated. If it was exalted and strong, they would have got it. Somebody else would have got it. See the point. Had this Jupiter been placed in the sixth, eighth, or twelfth, 
and in debilitated Navamsha, it is good for you. Because 6, 8 and 12 are bad houses. Planets placed there, benefits placed over there should be in debilitated Navamsha. Six, eighth, and twelfth from the Arudha Lagna. Okay? This is very important. So, Nietzsche Bhanga Raja Yoga and Raja Bhanga Nietzsche Yoga works from Arudha Lagna. Because it, when it comes to power, position, and authority, the Lagna is not important. How much of muscle you have is not important. What image you have is important. The image. The image. The image. Arudha That's what's going to matter. Okay, can we take up her chart? Can we have your chart details? Okay. Any more questions on this area? Am I am I being clear? Three family members with the son in the WT in the Navamsh chart. Yeah. Well, there is a lot of group come up. We'll take up those charts. Do you have the charts with you? Okay, we'll take up the charts after that. From the Aruda Lagna, do we find any, uh, unless I see the Navamsha, any planet debilitated in Navamsha? Okay, the moon is debilitated in the Navamsha. Let's see the Rashi chart. Is this good or bad? Moon in the ninth house? Yeah, moon is in the fifth house. Ninth from Arudalagna. From Arudalagna is the ninth. This yeah. is the ninth. Is it good or bad? It's good. Why? No, it's the Rashi. It's the opposite. Yeah. Right. 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 Apply the rules. Let's, let's not go to general or non-general. Apply the rules straight away and tell me. Is it in the houses 3, 6 no. and 12? I mean 3, 6, 8 and 12? No, it's not in those bad houses. It's in the ninth house. And placed in the ninth house is placed in debility. And in the Navamsha also it's in debility. So this is going to cause bad luck. But at what age will this be approximately? 22. 22 years? Yeah. Did? No, it's, 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 it's going to keep this up. <laughs> okay, let's just see her uh, year of birth, can we? 1961 plus 22 is how much? 83. Okay, what was the major change which happened in 83? I broke up with... Uh, somebody I love very much. That's that was a good thing overall in my life, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the long term, but the moon is not going to get so it so quickly. Right. Right, right, right. Serious emotional disappointments and a lot of mental tensions over there. At that age. Yeah, when you at that back, age, it might be a good yeah. thing. But and, that and let's see the dashas and see how it works. Let's see the dashas and see how it works. Wherever the moon has come. Let's see, let's see. Uh, somebody can someone. <coughs> How was 81 to 82? 82, especially 82. Uh, I was in love, I was in college, I was very poor. You were very poor? Yeah. <laughs> lot of, I had, lot of. All my kids were period, I was poor. I had no money whatsoever. Ketu in the 12th from Arda Lagna. See that? Straight away, in one minute you can say that. And it's exalted in the answer. It is exalted? Yes. Can we see the Navamsha chart? Oh, 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 it's exalted in the Navamsha chart. You see, here we have a planet which is exalted in the Navamsha chart, Ketu. And, and in the Rashi it is placed in the 12th house. So you see, this is exactly opposite of what Barry had. A planet placed in the 12th house in the Navamsha chart is placed in exalted Navamsha. So it's very bad. A planet which is placed in the twelfth house. Ketu is good for spirituality. Ketu is good for spirituality. It's not good for the material world. Aruda Lagna has all to do with the material world. Lagna from Lagna you see the spirituality. This is truth. This is untrue. This is status, power, position, wealth. 
No money. No money. Rahu Ketus will be bad for you then. And what about my own mom and dad? You know, when I'm going to answer the own mom and dad, it's going to be like me. Moon, moon will be bad. <coughs> Only moon, moon. No, no, no. We'll go into Vargotama later. We'll go into Vargotama later. All I want to know is what do you think about exalted and debilitated Navamshas? Do you find it working? Just now we did Barry's case. Just now we did her case. In both cases you saw. Is there a case Barry's case was exalted in Rashi and debilitated in Navamshas? In her case it's debilitated in both Rashi. No, it's not debilitated. It's exalted. The Ketu, the Ketu. Okay, Moon. We are talking about Ketu. Yeah, Moon and Ketu. Yeah, moon, moon will give her emotional disturbances. That's how it's going to work. What is the, I mean, Ketu is exalted in which sign? Ketu is uh, Sagittarius. Sad. Yeah, for and financial uh, matters. And Rahu opposite. In Gemini. Gemini. Yeah. For financial matters. The question is, uh, because it's part of my mom, or I did not uh, yoga. Kind of, because the, the moon and Mars change places, and they're both like, like Mars is my yoga and all that. This Mars is in the fifth right, but but Mars, but but it is in the fifth house from Arda Lagna. That's not good, no, because because it's an important house. His placement in debility is not good, but how is it is in Navamsha? You see my point? How is the planet in Navamsha? So in the Navamsha it's in Sagittarius, it's okay. It's a good sign, it's a beneficial sign, it's a sign of Jupiter. So there's going to be a lot of spirituality over here. That's good for you. But financially it is not very good. Because you can see that from the Aruda Lagna, uh, that's a planet which is placed in debility, but in the Navamsha it's okay. So even if these two planets are part of the like the deep Maharaja yoga kind of thing, but they're not... That is the point. You see, Maharaja Yogas need to be translated into material terms. If I am a Maharaja without a car, what is the value of the Maharaja Yoga? Am I clear on that? Yeah. I am trying to translate these things into material terms. Okay, let's go on. Okay, I have one question. Yeah. Let's say I have a Sagittarius with the AL and then a Mercury in the 10th house with the and then the Vamsha it goes to the uh, Leo. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. But had it been in Pisces, it would be bad. That would be very bad. Very so bad. Yeah. Would be Reputation would go. Reputation. Yeah. Reputation would go. Okay. Shall we go into the next aspect of uh, uh, what is Rasi Tulia Navamsha? Have you heard of this thing term earlier? Pardon? He, yeah. He uses this a lot. Narendra Desai also used it a lot. Yes, I'm aware of that. He used this a lot. This is people in the tradition in India. They will use this a, a lot. This is this is a typical Rashi Tulya Navamsha. It is also called the Bhava Suchaka Navamsha. Bhava Suchaka means he who starts, who gives the good news, who is the nimitta for the Bhava. It is the Navamsha chart as perceived from the Rashi Lagna. That is, we are not treating the Navamsha Lagna at all. We are treating the Rashi Lagna in the Navamsha chart. Okay? Uh, I'll just give one small example. Just open up any chart. Can I use same chart? Oh, here we have Lagna in Cancer. All you have to do is go to the Navamsha chart, take this Cancer as the Lagna and see the planets. These planets will have a hidden impact on the houses. For example, there you have Cancer as the first house. You treat Cancer over here as the first house and see the moon in fifth house. This has a hidden impact. So it is possible that fifth house related matters could come into focus during the period of this planet. Similarly, sixth house matters can come into focus during the periods of these planets. This is eighth house, Saturn. So during the period of Saturn, you can have Saturn giving some results of the eighth house also. These terms, like for example, Rahu is in the twelfth house. 
A very technical term used is Vyaya Amsa. Vyaya means 12th house, Vyaya Bhava, Amsa. These technical terms. If there was a planet out here, we would have called it Lagna Amsa. Lagna Amsa. Lagna is first house, Amsa is generally for Navamsha. Now let's say for example, I were to say, Rahu is in the second house in Vyaya Amsa. His intention is to cause a loss. His intention is to cause a loss. He is in Vyayamsa. So the Navamsha as reckoned from the Rashi Lagna, treating the Rashi Lagna in the Navamsha in the first house, is one very important indication for the chart. This will give you another view of what the intention of the planet is. Suchaka, the intention. So that's that to be in the Vaku, let's say in the Vaku Dasha, he can get money but he will lose money. No, the intention of the planet, the, the intention of that person, let's say, let's say that Rahu's intention, why is he doing all this? Because he also wants to cause loss. Yeah. Um, that goes for any Rahu that period, like under Dasha? Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't have to be material, right? Like it need not have to be material. It's that yes, yes. It could be something related to the twelfth house. Like, like spirituality. Travel. Yes, spirituality. Spirituality coming from a foreign country. You may get knowledge from a foreign country or foreign this thing. That is Rahu. Rahu has to do with foreigners, foreign things. So, knowledge related to spirituality coming from a foreign land. Jupiter and Sun could be Labha Amsa. Labha is 11th house, Amsa. That's why it's called Labha Amsa. 10th house is called Rajya or the throne, your kingdom. That's why it's called Rajya Amsa. So Venus could have a strong impact on your profession. Why? Because that is your 10th house. See, Venus is Vargotama in your 10th house. We'll come to Vargotama after this. So their position in Rasi is not considered for this particular aspect? This is Suchaka. Suchaka means what he wants to do. What is his intention? In the aspect of where they are placed in Rashi. Wherever they are placed in Rashi is a resource for the planet. For some intention. He has got some intention for you. Now if you have a planet that is going to be in the same position in the Rashi chart and from the Lagnamsa and the Navamsa chart, then it's going to really intensify whatever that means. That is precisely the meaning of the word Vargottama. What is Vargottama? Vargottama means a planet which is having the same meaning, both in Rashi and Navamsa. Right. You see, right. you look at this moon out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The moon is in the fifth house. And from Cancer, which is her Lagna, it is still again in the fifth house. That is Vargottama. And here same way with Venus, that is what Vargottama is all about. When we say that a planet is Vargottama, that means as far as the native's personal life is concerned, his personality is concerned, that planet has a dominant influence on that house. That planet will have a dominant say on that house affairs for the native. Is there any way out of it? Out of a Virgo Sama? <laughs> no, I'll give, you mine. I'll give you mine as an example. Saturn in the second house. Yeah. Saturn okay, let's take Ronnie's chart. Let's take Ronnie's chart. You don't have to put my chart up, but it's just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No, I don't need a whole chart. Saturn Virgo Sama in the second house. Huh. So, so that means so that during my Saturn Dasha, there was no way out of Saturn in the second house. No, so Saturn. I have 19 years. What I'm saying is that was there any way I could have changed? See, Ronnie, Saturn, Saturn will be the one that's going to be trouble. Right. Saturn, Saturn. Saturn. Right. Saturn, Saturn. What about the other answer, Dashas? Other planets come to play. But the dominant thing was still Saturn, Saturn in the second house. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Right? The, now I'm out of Saturn now, but in hindsight, was there yeah. anything that I could have done? <laughs> we'll just come to another part of that, okay? What is the importance of Vargotama? Vargotama means that. Now, there is another way of looking at a chart. Planet. See the planet where it is placed in the Rashi chart. And see its position in the Navamsha chart. Count that many houses. That it will have a direct impact on that house. 
so a virgo tama planet has a direct impact on you so for example if moon is virgo tama she is emotional if venus is virgo tama she is very artistic i have mercury virgo tama i am a good writer perhaps i can speak well jupiter virgo tama he is very intelligent should be sun sun virgo tama <laughs> I am not doing chat readings out here. Take an appointment for freedom. Oh, good Pardon? What is that? That is called Mrityunjaya. Yes, that is called Mrityunjaya. That means life is long, long life. It gives long life. It gives the blessings of Mrityunjaya Shiva. Very long life. Good long life. Yeah. Bad long life. <laughs> According to the Shastra, long life is supposed to be good. It's a blessing. So I call it good long life. Will 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 go to Gandhanta now, Amshal. No, what you said that you take the moon and count. Right, right. Okay, are you all clear about that counting? No. No. Moon was Virgo Tama. So from the moon's position in the Rashi, I count to the moon's position in the Navamsha. How many houses do I get? one so moon has a direct influence on my personality right one 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 where is the moon in which sign which sign is the moon in uh, scorpio navamsha which sign it is in scorpio so count from scorpio to scorpio one oh okay okay let's take another planet let's take jupiter jupiter is where capricorn, capricorn. navamsha where is he placed Taurus. Taurus. Count from here to Taurus. Five. 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 Jupiter has a direct impact on a fifth house. Okay. Mm-hmm. House on children. Jupiter will have a strong say on the children. Children could be very intelligent. Can you do it on the other? Uh, I get so confused. Yeah. On the north and south. Okay. Okay. Go on this. Go on this. Jupiter is where? Jupiter. Where is it? <laughs> okay. In the Rashi, this is the Navamsha. See the see the Rashi chart. It's here in yeah. Capricorn, right? In ten. And here it's in Taurus. So count from Capricorn to Taurus, we get five. That's how it is. It has a direct impact on the personality of the people related to that house. But because that Jupiter is debilitated in the in the natal chart and is in the in the enemy sign in the Navamsha. That's a different thing altogether. That will have an impact on the Aruda. So what kind of impact on the Aruda? Yeah. Yeah. There are some other there are some other indications. There are some other indications, but but Saturn Jupiter combination shows uh, a desire to learn Brahma Vidya. Brahma Vidya is the knowledge of Brahma, and it shows a very high level of spirituality. That's good for you. That's good for you. Let's not get into other things. Generally, it shows a strong impact on the fifth house. Jupiter is going to have a very strong impact on the fifth house. Am I being understood, or shall we? Yeah. yeah. Right. It's a negative impact because if the Jupiter is in Rashi. We are not going into negative positive impact. You are emotional. Is that negative or positive? It's neutral. <laughs> you got the point. You got the point. That is a good side and a bad side to everything in life. So I'm, we are not talking about negative impacts. We're just showing, uh, seeing that this particular attribute is there. You are emotional. That's all. Venus is there. Virgo Tama. You are artistic. That is there. Okay. If we say she has got Saturn in Virgo Tama, what would you say? It's uh, responsible, uh, dutiful, uh, careful. Taskmaster, you got to be on time. Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie does that to me. You got to be on time. Huh? Are you skeptical? Saturn, uh, not skeptical really, no. A person who follows the tradition or likes to study things of the old. She really goes into the knowledge of the old seers. She really goes into it. That's Saturn Bhargotama. The impact of Saturn is on her nature. Orthodox to some extent, yeah. Yeah. Okay? Okay, let's go to the next part of the Navamsha. What happens if your Lagna is Virgotama? 
I said that you have long life. Now, and you all accepted it. Why? I don't know. <laughs> because I said so. What happens if somebody's Namam Shalagna is in the 11th house? From the Rashi. Person is spiritual? No. Yes. Let's say somebody has uh, Aries Lagna, uh, let's say Pisces Lagna and um, Capricorn Namamsha. Is the person spiritual or not? Yes. 12th of indication to live All Right. This is a very important thing that you got to bear in mind. Check the Navamsha Lagna in the Rashi chart. The second house from that is that which is going to be very strong in the life of the person. Check the Navamsha Lagna, bring that to back to the Rashi chart, and the second from that is going to be a very strong bhagya or influence in your life. That house will become very prominent. Jaimini says that if the Navamsha Lagna is in the 11th house from the Lagna, then the person is very spiritual. Why is the person spiritual? I mean, he gets moksha, he says he gets moksha. Why? Now, Moksha house is which house? Twelve. So, if the Navamsha Lagna is in the eleventh house, which is the second from the eleventh? Right. Get it? Okay. Now, if somebody's Navamsha Lagna is in the tenth from the Lagna, the person has gains all the time like a king. Why? If the Navamsha Lagna is in the tenth house, from the Rashi Lagna, the person has gains all the time, like a king. Why? The second from that is the eleventh house. That's right. I have my Navamsha Lagna in the ninth house. What does that mean? I work all the time. I'm a fool. You recognize. No, yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe, 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 maybe that's right, that's right, that's right. Pardon? Uh, your career should be well established, right? I work a lot, that's all. You get recognition. I mean, I go to work. That's more you get recognition for your work. Yeah, maybe I get recognition for my work. Okay, okay, people know me, Ron knows me. <laughs> well, it's the recognition, it's the same, the recognition. Right, so what happens if somebody is Navamsha Lagna is in the 8th house? Uh, they get the children, they get the... <laughs> no, 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 so ninth house is the house of spirituality and only those people who get setbacks remember God otherwise they don't have time to remember God that's part of life if it happens in 12th house what will happen? if the Navam Lagna is called from Lagna so the Lagna is very strong the focus is on the self all the time the person is a bit selfish self-centered it's not Papi it's good to look after yourself what's wrong? Uh, this house has become so important. It does, it's not necessarily that you benefit from it. It's not bad, right? It could and be good. Yes, yes, yes. It could be good. It could be bad. That we have to see from the planets. All I'm trying to say is that one aspect of life becomes very prominent. This is so, the second house. Uh, yeah. So if you put the Navam Shalagna where it's in the Rashi chart, yeah, and you see which house is that. Second from that. Oh, the second yeah, yeah. In this, in this chart, okay, in my chart, here, this is my lagna, okay? This is, here, the spices, right? And where's the namamsha lagna? It's Scorpio. Now, which sign is Scorpio in my now ninth house? So, I take the second from that, that is the tenth house. So, this sign becomes very prominent in my chart. I must study this sign to understand the total effect of my karma in this life. How, uh, what is it that my mind would like to pursue? Okay. And what, what if, if it goes to the fourth house, what means? So if, if it goes to the fourth house, let us say the Navamsha Lagna for some reason would have been, let's say, here in this house. 
it cannot be but let's say it was here then the focus would be the fifth house and what is the fifth house to do with learning knowledge no 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 i say if it, it goes to the third house and yeah and the fourth and house and what's the, the fourth of? house so the fourth house has to do with what learning. home home family well okay what else no 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 he's here don't, don't 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 make a prediction that because the Navam Silakna is in the third house, that's why the person can a real estate business. No. <laughs> happiness. It's a, yeah, happiness. The person is generally happy, seeking happiness, fulfillment. It's a, it's a very good sign. It's a very good sign. Seeking happiness in the family or home or anything like that, or not really. Not really home. Then for that we have to see the things with the fourth lord and the first house and things like that. So yeah. Your to be a thing. That's right. That's right. It's something to do internally. Internally. What if it's the sixth? Okay. Yeah. Go on. What if that's the second from the the Navam yes. So so it's a very internal struggle. It's a very strong internal struggle to uh, suppress oneself, not to get into fights. Nothing to do with health. Health we will go into, we will go into health matters. I am just talking about an internal nature. Okay. It is possible that uh, Navam Lagna can be something else, okay. any health could be bad. Pardon? Hey, if heaven happens to be the Navam Lagna, Okay. we focus on what, from the internal perspective? You tell me, transformations, changing, learning, risk taking, those attributes will come into the person. So the person tends to, you know, it is not considered very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if it goes to the first house, it's himself. No. If the second goes to, if the Navam let's say the Navam Shalagna is Vargotama. Why is it so good? Because it's the first house back in the Rasi chart. Is the first house back in the Rasi chart, the sign which is coming into focus is the second house. Sustenance. You have very good sustenance. You have long life. Mm -hmm. So Vargotama Lagna is a big, is a big blessing. No, what I say is, if you go to the 12th house and you come to the second, it's the... Lagna. So, so then you become a bit selfish. Exactly. You are more self-centered. Yeah. More self-centered. How is sustenance an internal attribute? Uh, it is an internal attribute, really, if you come to think of it. You don't... Uh, you live as long as the Atma wishes to sustain the body. Is it not? So, your, your ability to come out of diseases is good. You will naturally pick up the right foods. You will naturally pick up the right medicines. You don't have to wait for people with Bhargotama Lagna. Do not have to wait for somebody else to take them to the doctor. You just go to the doctor the moment you feel sick. You don't need to uh, fall sick and suffer and realize that you are sick. You are always looking after yourself. That's a good sign, yeah. Bhargotama is if it's in the same house, yeah. have the same sign. Same sign. Same sign. Same sign. Same yes, not yes. House. Not the house. So good point. Anybody else has such questions before we? Yeah. Why is it the second house? Why are we looking at the second house? Second is the house of sustenance. Of sustenance. No, no. Why is the focus no, on the second house? No, no. Why are we looking at second house? From the house? Germany. That is what Germany says. Yeah, but why? Why? Why does Germany say that? That's well, that's the philosophy. We'll go into that. You want me to explain that part? Why? Do you all want to understand why? Okay, good point. Fine. What is Navamsha all about? Ninth house? Yes. yes. So, Navamsha means like the ninth house? Mm -hmm. So, the fifth from the Navamsha is like the first house? Yes. If the Navamsha is the ninth house, the fifth from the Navamsha is the ninth house. And which is the house of success of any activity? Tenth house? Yes. Tenth house? So, I take the ninth house and then I take the fifth from it. Yes. To come at to come to myself or the first house and then I take the tenth from it to see that which will succeed. So I am going to the second house from the Navamsha. So that house must are you are you understanding or am I going very fast? No, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> very, everybody here should very understand. Very fast. It didn't make sense. <laughs> Can you all see this? Yeah. Somebody said thank God with the North Indian chart I guess. Yeah. Okay. Let us say this is Aries. And let us say the Navamsha Lagna is here, ascendant. Navamsha ascendant. Okay? Okay. The fifth house, now this Navamsha ascendant is like the ninth house. If this is like the ninth house, the fifth from this is like Lagna. 
so this is lagna temporary i am just calling this a temporary lagna okay based upon the navamsha and that which will succeed is the tenth from this that is this so it must succeed right it must succeed that which will that which is in the sky tenth house is that which is in the sky so even if the planet is bare that rules that house the people will have success in that you, area. you will go into that particular area you will definitely go into that particular area because it is in the sky that which is on top is that what we are going through and that is because of fortune that is why jaimini uses this principle the second house from navamsha so it's not that you just aspire there you also be successful there that's my question is or whether you will really succeed or not we will see as the dashas progress dashas play a crucial role dashas yeah dashas are very important i mean dashas can make or break anything that's important i mean roni can probably take a special class on vimshotri dasha and explain roni can take a class on vimshotri dasha and can explain how it really works but i am here to basically show you how the navamsha how, what are the techniques to use for studying the navamsha right so that particular house is that what you attempt to succeed in life you attempt to succeed house that's the direction yes it's a very crucial direction we get from that house with the planet over there succeed There's nothing called planet over there, so we'll we'll go to that part. The house is important, so everything is important over there. Okay, let's go to the next aspect. Virgo Tama Navamsha. I explained Virgo Tama Navamsha also to you just now, and I explained different houses which are going to impact based upon the Navamsha. Okay, there is something called Shubha Virgo Tama and Papa Virgo Tama and things like that. Have you heard of this? Shubha means good, Papa means bad. uh vargottama navamshas are the first navamshas of movable signs middle navamshas or the fifth navamshas of fixed signs and the last navamshas of dual signs what happens if a planet is vargottama in let's say the first navamsha of capricorn is it good i just showed a chart to you in which a planet was vargottama in the first navamsha of capricorn and the person became mad the fifth house it totally damaged his fifth house so what is the meaning of vargottama vargottama means that which is going to affect you again good and bad will depend upon how friendly that navamsha is to the planet concerned a capricorn vargottama may need not be good for jupiter but it can be very good for saturn excellent for mars you see my point we should not a cancer vargottama need not be good for mars at all so vargottama has to be decided on that basis as shubha vargottama or a papa vargottama good or bad you have to decide there is nothing called i mean statements like ronnie was just now talking some people say vargottama is like exaltation that's nonsense that's total nonsense it's it's absurd i can show you so many cases where vargottama has caused havoc to the house concern